everyone welcome back to my channel my name is colleen and today i want to talk to you about something that's really near and dear to my heart and that is under consumption core trend that has been going around everywhere i know i'm a little bit behind on this but did anyone else when watching these videos just go that's just normal life like it's not normal to do a 400 500 like shopping haul unless you're stocking up on groceries for the month. Like, why are you spending so much money on this skincare, beauty care, clothes, everything? So a part of me loves this trend. I love that people are showing normal homes and kind of showing that it's okay and it's completely normal to not have the newest, the greatest, the whateverest, and be happy with the life that you do have. Because I know a lot of things from overconsumption comes from that feeling of missing out or just really not being happy with your life. And you think this next new thing, this new outfit, this new makeup, this new whatever is going to make you happy. And it's probably not. If you're not happy now with who you are, that new outfit might make you feel good for sure for like a day or two. But eventually, you're just going to go back to who you are. So I've seen a lot of varying videos on this, but I want to jump on in and let's talk about it. Let's jump into this first clip. I will absolutely die on the hill that being able to train yourself to enjoy living below your means is the ultimate life yes. hack. Being deliberate yes, about is. what and when to buy, focusing on the necessity and quality will save you so much money in the long run and make you so much more fulfilled with the purchases you do oh, make. Here are a few of the ways that I embrace under consumption in my life. My car is a 2018 Kia Soul that I managed to pay off last December. You will literally have to pry this car from my cold dead hands before I go back to having a car payment ever again. I will run this car into the ground. <laughs> I make my coffee at home, and no, we don't have a fancy Nespresso or Breville, just our trusty Keurig that we've had for years, and we literally just buy whatever store brand K-Cups are on sale that week. I'm really proud of this next one. I've gotten my everyday makeup routine down to five items, and that maybe goes up to seven items if it's an evening look. I've always felt way more comfortable in less makeup, so I just leaned into that and stopped trying to buy every single product that someone else looked good in. And lastly, I've been very intentional about developing hobbies that I love that don't require me to spend a lot of money like camping hiking working out and content creation there's honestly something so satisfying about being able to have a good time without spending any money i love all of that i also have i have one paid off car it's a 2011 chevy cruze i love it it is the first car i ever bought and we are going to run that car into the ground in fact if you've seen um another video of mine i'll put it up above we are working on paying off our, our second car. We are a two car household. So we're working on paying that car off because that payment hurts my heart. <laughs> it's like almost $500 and that money could be better spent so many other places. And again, finding hobbies, finding free things that bring fulfillment and joy to your life. Like I have been working on my health journey. I go to the gym six days a week, six, seven days a week. And I love it. It's like $35 a month. My kid gets to play with other kids. He colors and I get my personal time. I'm getting myself healthier. They have a little sauna. They have a hot tub. It's wonderful and brings me so much joy <laughs> to go to. Like you can find inexpensive ways to really enjoy your life. That's not cluttering it up with stuff. Now, I'm not going to preface this clip with anything, but it's really short. I'm not sure if that video was like a parody in response to like under consumption core, because I've seen some of those. So people like show a bunch of stuff and they're like, oh, don't look over here. Like, look at this, like clear minimalism. And they're clearly like, they're having fun with it. But... You can't just throw away all your stuff. It's kind of like with um, you know, like being environmentally friendly. Like, don't just get rid of all your disposable stuff and throw it away. Like, use it. Use what you have is the most sustainable thing to do. And then when that item is no longer usable, it's broken down, like you can't do anything with it, dispose of it the best way you can. 
and then replace it with some more sustainable options like all of your paper towels getting like the washcloths or using like old rags and turning them into things you can't just get rid of everything because even if you do and you haven't changed any of like your own personality or kind of made any alterations you're just gonna go back and buy it again so why throw it away instead of like working through and figuring out why do I need a million of these? Why do I need like 27 perfumes? You don't. One or two does the job just as well. This clip is a little longer, but it does kind of play on what I just talked about. If I were to start over on kicking the habit on overconsumption, here's exactly where I would start. Today we're talking about clothing. Firstly, I would unsubscribe to any emails that you're getting yeah. about clothing brands. Cannot tell you how much content I've seen regarding fall in the last week. Here's our new and improved clothing line. Here's things that are gonna be trendy. Here's what's gonna be on sale. Respectfully, it's 100 degrees outside in July. I'm not thinking <laughs> about fall that isn't gonna happen until late September. But they want you to always be ahead of the trends. Which brings me to my next point. You have to disconnect on how you think about clothing. Clothing is meant to last years, seasons, not one mm -hmm. season. The cycling that we see through brands is to represent a season. We want you to keep coming back and spending money. That is overconsumption. They play into this mind trap that we all seem to fall in. Confidence can be bought. My last tip is loving yourself and loving your body. You make the clothes look good, not the other way around. When you start to do these disconnects, you can start to underconsume. So I definitely agree with that. If you do have like a shopping addiction or you're constantly being bombarded let's face it advertisement is everywhere you are constantly being shown the newest the greatest the best you need this right now to make everything better you're constantly being shown that from our social media to just ads on like our new streaming services to your emails that's something i've started doing from brands that i haven't used in years I'm still getting all their emails, so I'll go through unsubscribe, and I will actually take that and go through my inbox, like like search for it, and delete all the emails that have just been clogging on in my inbox, like clear that out. And I really love that she's like, you gotta get to kind of the root of it. Clothes are meant to last a long time. My husband has this leather jacket that he did find on sale, I think, before we ever met. He loves it, I love it. And it's lasted decade like over a decade this jacket is still in pretty good shape you got to take it and get like the leather treated or cured or whatever it is i don't really know but it lasts a really long time so i would focus on getting more what are the staple pieces you need and invest in the quality of the material so it lasts you for several years versus falling apart whoever came up with under consumption tiktok I want to thank you personally <laughs> from the bottom of my heart because this has been the most peaceful content mm -hmm. that has been on my feed so in a long time. I feel seen. That was very short and sweet. I do love watching the underconsumption TikTok videos because they have this like serene music and they're just showing normalcy. And it does. It makes me feel so good about my space, my home, and just so peaceful. <laughs> A lot of those things I know I can relate to. I don't really take the spices out of the jars to put them in new containers. I, I don't quite get that. I get it with like some things like my flour, some of my rice, because like the bag's now open, you want to keep it airtight. But like your seasonings, it, it looks pretty, but I buy big containers. So I'm gonna take this big container and fill this little container 
So the little container is seen, but then where am I putting the big container with the excess? No, I, I don't want to do that. My cabinet's a mess, but it's not as messy as it could be if I had twice as many jars. But even like her dining room, like my dining room table, we got from a neighbor for free. It like didn't fit in their space. They ordered another one. We were gonna have to go try and find one. They brought it over. We've had it now almost six years. And like the chair's been scuffed up from dogs and kids, but like it serves its purpose and it was free. <laughs> we're gonna keep that table for a very long time. This, the clip, is a little bit longer, but I do think she has some great stuff in here. Under consumption core and like budgeting and frugal tips and stuff like that is kind of trending right now, which I love because that's kind of my whole like personality for the past mm -hmm. year and a half since I've gotten really into personal finance. So I wanted to contribute to this conversation by talking about the things I no longer do as a somewhat new financially responsible girly. So the obvious thing is I don't do my nails. I didn't do them ever before. And then I started being into them and now I'm back out of them because it's like $60 and I feel like every so week they just go bad again. Like they chip and stuff. I went through a phase like a year ago, two years, no, one or two years ago. I can't remember. It was the year my sister got married and we had like her bachelorette. And then a few months later we had her wedding. And then a few months later, we had this, and then we had that, and then a bunch of things. So I got my nails done for these events, but I did like the no chip, which then put me in a cycle of like every month, they, they lasted quite a while, going back because I didn't want to risk damaging my nail by taking them off. And then there was another event, or I was at home and my mom offered to like pay to get my nails done as a little treat. So I got my nails done probably like six times that year which normally it's like one or two times a year i'll go get my nails done just get them cut up cleaned up nice little treat but yeah it's expensive getting your nails done next is like we don't get our car cleaned on a regular basis or anything like that it's like bare minimum if we need to like my car is a mess right now and i'm just kind of living with that until i absolutely can anymore and then i'll get it clean we spend way less money on eating out and just like impulse food purchases. Don't get me wrong, this is like our weakness. So um, it's not perfect, but I'm definitely getting way better. We meal plan and cook at home most of the time. Mm -hmm. Next is cars, like in general, going along with the car cleaning. Like we only have one car right now and we're saving to be able to buy another car outright instead of having a payment plan. And it saves us money in the meantime mm -hmm. because then we don't really have a car to maintain or anything like that. Yeah. I've officially stopped spending money on getting my hair done. I am a hairstylist, so I can cut my own hair and do my own highlights and stuff like that for the most part if I wanted to. Although I've stopped even doing my highlights, I'm just down to cutting my hair and I'm letting my natural color grow out now, which has been really interesting because I got this gray stripe, but that's besides the point stopped shopping for clothes every month like i only buy something if it's something that i really 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 been wanting and waiting for or it's something that i need like we need new socks or something we only wait until there's a need i don't just like mm -hmm. look for clothes to buy even though i'm like super into fashion and stuff like that i just try not to look at that stuff because i know it's not good for my bank i stopped spending money on candles like smelly good stuff i stopped spending money on like all the latest like home cleaning stuff. I just get the basics and that's what we use. I don't spend money on the gym. We just use the HOA one that we have or okay. we just go outside or I work out at home. And the list goes on and on. I mean, I just start saying no to things and see if we can live without. And most of the time you can. I feel like a lot of stuff in American culture just sounds like you need this, you need that. And it just ends up being a bunch of crap that sits in our house yeah. and we need to get rid of later or we get a storage container for it. Like, I don't need all that in my life. I've really realized I'm fine with the bare minimum. Stuff is so expensive anyway these days that I don't need all the fancy, fancy stuff. It doesn't mean that I won't later. It just means right now we have different goals and priorities um, of where we mm -hmm. want to put our money for our family. And that's what we're doing. So anyway, what are you guys doing? What's your end of consumption core stuff looking like? Okay. It sounds like her and her husband have definitely been making a lot of sacrifices, which is great. You know, 
I don't think frugality is really having no extras, like waiting until you're down to like your last pair of socks before you go buy new socks. I think it's just more of like the mindset of you don't need everything right now or really where are you placing the value of your dollar. Thank you guys for sticking around with me today. I'd love to know down below what your thoughts are on this underconsumption, overconsumption, like frugality trend that's going around. And I will see you all on the next one. Bye.